Mga kapwa kong mag-aaral, minamahal ng mga guro at magulang, damhin po natin ang presensya ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng panalangin. Aming amang makapangyarihan sa lahat, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa buhay at kalakasan na patuloy ninyong ipinagkakaloob sa amin. Salamat po sa patuloy na pagsubaybay at paglingap sa amin, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Kami po ay humihingi ng awa at kapatawaran sa lahat ng aming kakulangan at pagkakasala na alam po namin hindi kalugod-lugod sa iyong banal na harapan. Dahil sa COVID-19, maraming pagsubok ang, a- ang aming mga guro. Salamat po sa kanilang mga buhay at kalakasan. Patuloy niyo po silang pagpalain. Bigyan ng karunungan nagmumula sa inyo upang kanilang magampanan ang mabigat na tungkulin na kaatang sa kanilang mga balikat. Bukod po namin inilalapit ang mga guro na nagpapagal upang sila ay makapaghatid ng mga educational videos para sa aming mga Fernandino. Salamat sa pagbibigay ninyo ng pagkakataon na mabuo ang special TV at ang iba't ibang programa sa TV at radyo upang kami ay matuto kahit nasa sarili kaming mga bahay kasama ang aming mga magulang. Pagpalain niyo po ang lahat ng kanilang mga gawa upang ang mga ito ay makapagbigay ng karangalan hindi lang para sa mga tao kundi mas higit sa iyo, Panginoon. Patuloy niyo po silang bigyan ng maayos na kalusugan, sapat na karunungan at maalam na determinasyong maipagpatuloy ang layunin ng DepEd at ng San Fernando Elementary School. Hangad po namin ang inyong patuloy na pagmamahal at gabay sa bawat isa sa aming mga Fernandino mag-aaral at sa mga batang mula sa iba't ibang lugar na lagi sumusubaybay sa programang hatid ng Special TV. Patuloy niyo pong ibuhos ang kaalamang nagmumula sa iyo sa aming mga isip at puso. Salamat po sa regalo ninyong pamilya sa amin. Patuloy niyo pong gabayan at patnubayan ang aming mga magulang Bigyan sila na sapat na kalakasan at karunungan upang kami ay maturuan nila sa tamang daan at makatuwang namin sa lahat ng oras at pagkakataon. Ama, tulungan mo po kami isa pamuhay ang mga aral na dala ng programang ito. Ang lahat ng ito ay aming dinadalangin sa ngalan ng inyong bugtong na anak na si Jesus. Sa ngalan ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen.
Elise's here. Elise's here. Hello, kids. Let's learn English. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. English is fun and exciting. Words, phrases, and sentences are captivating. Vocabulary and grammar are interesting. It's amazing. Listen, speak, read and write. Know the language and use it right. Come along and join Elise. She explores the world of English. Let us discover. Let's learn English. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. I want to learn something in English today. Um, will I call Gina? I'll try to call her. Gina! Gina! Are you busy? Can you come here so we can learn English together? Hello, Elise! I heard your call. I'm really going to see you today because a new learning in English awaits us. Oh, I'm so excited. Come on. Mm, before we go to the magical world of English, there's something I want to say. Oh, Elise, what a mess. You should not scatter your things like this. Even though I'm inside the book, I could hear your mother reminding you to arrange her things after you use them. I'm sorry, Gina. Yes, you are right. Mother always tells me that. Mm. I should start sorting all my stuff. As you see, Gina, I have two large containers here. Mother told me that this container is for my small stuff, and that container is for my big stuff. I'm done, Gina! Wow! You did great! You were able to compare and contrast all your stuff. Compare and contrast? Aha! Uh -huh. You compared all this stuff here. You were able to identify their similarity in size. They are all small. The same goes with that container. Those stuff have similarity. They are all big. What about contrast? How did I do it? When you group your stuff, Elise, you have separated the stuff correctly because of their different sizes. You saw their difference from big to small. That is contrasting. Oh, is that so, Gina? Comparing is identifying similarities and contrasting is identifying differences? Absolutely correct! Comparing and contrasting also go with information heard or read. You can also compare and contrast them. How is that? To answer your question, Elias, close your eyes and prepare yourself for another exploration in English! Oh, 
Gina. We are in the forest. Yes, Elise. Look at the animals. They are so many. Look, lions are so big. There are tigers here too, Gina. They are big as lions. You're right, Elise. Come on, let's go over there. Here they are. Gina, look, there are many birds. Those are eagles, right? That's correct. What about those birds? Can you identify them? Those are parrots. Eagles and parrots can both fly. Look, they are flying. I'm so happy for you. You're having a great time, Elise. I really do. Oh, what a big snake. <laughs> Gina, if birds can fly using their wings, snakes litter using their body muscles because they do not have their legs. You are so good, Elise. I learned that in my science subject. Hi, Liz. Hi, Gina. It's nice to see you both. Hi, kids. It's nice to see you all, too. I am Teacher Laila. Hello, Teacher! I heard your conversation with Gina, Elise. You are amazing. You are so good at comparing and contrasting different characteristics of animals. Gina also told me that earlier, Teacher Laila. Can you please tell me more about... Comparing and contrasting? Yes, of course, Elise. Elise, I will leave you for a while. Enjoy your time learning with Teacher Lila. See you later. Thank you, Teacher. Okay, Elise. Listen carefully because today, I will be discussing comparing and contrasting. Hello there, kids. For today's lesson, we will learn how to compare and contrast. Let's talk about their meaning. To compare is to tell what is alike or the same in things, animals, people, or ideas. Look at these fruits. Can you identify them? Great job! The first one is a coconut and the other one is a guava. Observe these two fruits. Can you compare them? Remember kids, when you compare, you tell what is alike or the same in things. Amazing! Coconut and guava have the same color. They are both color green. What does it mean to contrast? To contrast means to tell what is different in things, animals, people, or ideas. Look at these things. Can you identify them? Awesome! The first one is a rock and the other one is a cotton ball. Observe these two things. Can you contrast them? Remember kids, when you contrast, you tell what is different in things, animals, people, or ideas. Amazing! The rock and the cotton ball have different textures. The rock is hard while the cotton ball is soft. Can you find another difference? Two thumbs up! They have different colors too. The rock is gray while the cotton ball is white. Amazing, kids! Kids, sometimes when we compare and contrast two things, we use a graphic organizer called a Venn diagram. This is how a Venn diagram looks like. A Venn diagram is an illustration that uses circles to show the relationships among things, animals, people, or ideas. In using a Venn diagram, we write the similarities or the same characteristics in the middle part. We write the differences or different characteristics on both sides. Welcome to Exploring English with me. 
Now, I will read to you a paragraph that tells about this too. Listen carefully, kids. Apples and oranges are both fruits. Apples are delicious. Oranges are also delicious. Apples, as well as oranges, are nutritious. However, they are different in some characteristics. Apples are red in color while oranges are orange in color. Apples have smooth skin. On the other hand, oranges have rough skin. They also differ in taste. Apples are sweet, while oranges are a bit sour. Now, let's use the Venn diagram to compare and contrast apples and oranges. Kids, based on the information given in the paragraph, compare apples and oranges. This means that you have to give their similarities or the same characteristics of the two fruits. Amazing! Apples and oranges are both fruits. We will write this similarity in the middle or in the overlapping part of the two circles. Great job! Can you give another similarity? or the same characteristics of these two fruits? Awesome! They are both delicious! Look at the information in the paragraph again. Compare the two fruits. Two thumbs up! They are both nutritious! This time, we are going to contrast them. Remember, when we contrast, we give the differences of two things. Based on the information in the paragraph, give the difference of apples and oranges. Good job! Apples are red in color, while oranges are orange in color. In writing the differences in the Venn diagram, differences of the two things being contrasted are written on both sides. The left side is for the characteristic of apples, and the right side is for oranges. We are going to write their differences in this way. Can you give another difference? Incredible! Apples have smooth skin, while oranges have rough skin. Give another difference. Nice one! Apples are sweet, while oranges are a bit sour. Great job, kids! You were able to compare and contrast apples and oranges using the given information heard. Now, look at the paragraph again. Read the highlighted words. Very good! Both as well as, also, these are clue words in comparing. When these words are used, they give us clues that the given information show or give similarities or the same characteristics of things. Look at the paragraph again. Read another set of words. Excellent! However, while, on the other hand, but, these are clue words in contrasting. When these words are used, they give us clues that the given information shows differences of things. Now, join me as I read the story written by Teacher Normita S. Gatos. Friendship is for All by Normita S. Gatos. Marisa and Neri are friends. They are both Grade 3 pupils of San Fernando Elementary School. Marisa came from a rich family. Her parents are a teacher and an architect. She is well provided of the things she needed and wanted. Marisa's parents enrolled her online. They bought her the gadgets needed for her online classes. Despite of this, she remained humble and kind. She loves her parents very much. Neri, on the other hand, 
came from a poor family. Her mother and father are farmers. Despite of this, they are working hard so she can study. They enrolled her through the printed enrollment form given by the school. However, Nelly's parents did not buy her own gadget. Instead, she just borrows from her brother. But still, she also loves her parents. Like Marisa, she is humble and kind as well. Even though they live differently, they remain friends. Did you enjoy reading it? That's nice to know. Let's read the words that describe or tell about Marisa. Marisa is a girl. She is rich, kind, and humble. She is a grade 3 pupil of San Fernando Elementary School. She has gadgets for schooling. She enrolled online. And her parents are a teacher and an architect. Now, let's read the words that describe or tell about Neri. Neri, she is a girl. She's poor, kind, and humble. She is a grade 3 pupil of San Fernando Elementary School. She has no gadgets for schooling. Write the similarities or the same characteristics of Marisa and Neri in the middle of the Venn diagram and their differences or different characteristics on both sides. Look at their characteristics again. Compare Marisa and Neri. Write their similarities or the same characteristics they both have in the middle part. Awesome! You have compared Marisa and Neri correctly. Now, let's contrast Marisa and Neri. Help Elise give their differences or the different characteristics each one has. Write your answers on both sides. Incredible! With longs, most live on land. Fish, have a backbone, have a skeleton, cold-blooded, scaly skin, hatch from eggs, breathe with gills, live in water. This time, let's use a Venn diagram to compare and contrast mammals and fish. Are you ready? Kids, show what you've got! Are you done, kids? Is your answer like this? Incredible! You have shown the similarities and differences of mammals and fish using a Venn diagram. Welcome to Exploring English with me. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. Great job, Elise! Thank you, teacher! Hey, Gina! You're back! Yes, Elise! There's still something you have to learn today, Elise. Yes, please, teacher! What is that? Affixes? Yes, it's about affixes. I want to learn about them. Okay, listen carefully. To 
today, another lesson will be discussed. We are going to find out what are affixes. Are you ready? Very good. Let me read to you a story written by teacher Normita S. Gatos. A Day with Mom by Normita S. Gatos. Athena woke up unhappy. She was not able to finish her assignment because there were words that were unfamiliar to her. She asked her mom to review the lessons that their teacher gave them. Mom helped her in her homework. Mom discussed the lesson and even gave her several examples. Finally, Athena had finished her task. She was thankful for her mom's support. Did you like the story? That's great! Let's talk about it. Number 1. Who woke up unhappy? Correct! Athena woke up unhappy. Number 2. Why did she not finish her assignment? That's right! There were words that were unfamiliar to her. Number three, what did she ask her mom to do? Awesome! She asked her mom to review the lessons. And number four, who gave the assignment to her? Well done! Her teacher gave her the assignment. Now, let's read the underlined words from the sentences. Unhappy, unfamiliar, review, teacher. These words are words with affixes. What are affixes? Affixes are series of letters or syllables added to a root word that can change the meaning of a word. Look at this picture. Joshua is happy because he has a new toy car. The word happy in the sentence means feeling or showing pleasure or contentment. Now, look at this another picture. Jason is unhappy because his toy car was broken. The word unhappy in the sentence means not happy. Notice the letters U and N or the syllable UN in the word unhappy. UN is an example of a prefix. It means not. Prefixes are affixes found at the beginning of the base word. The prefix UN changes the meaning of the word because it means not. The meaning of the word becomes the opposite or the antonym of the base word. An plus happy equals unhappy, means not happy or sad. Another example is unfamiliar. Unfamiliar means not familiar or something that is not known or recognized. It is the opposite of familiar. An plus familiar is equal to unfamiliar means not familiar. Observe the robot closely. Is there something missing? Great job! None. The robot has complete parts. The underlined word is complete. Complete means having all the necessary or appropriate parts. Now, look at this one. Is there something missing? Yes, the robot's foot is missing. The robot has incomplete parts. The underlined word is incomplete. What was added to the word complete? Correct. In was added. In is another prefix. It also means not. So, incomplete means not complete. In 
plus complete is equal to incomplete means not complete. Here are other examples of common prefixes. Prefix pre means before, example pre-read. Prefix re means again, example review. Prefix this meaning not, opposite of, example disconnect. Prefixes non, im, in, Il, ear, un means not. Examples, nonsense, improper, inactive, illegal, irregular, unstable. Prefix mis, meaning wrong or bad. Example, misconduct. Let's look at another example. What is the mother doing? Very good! The mother is teaching her children. The action word in the sentence is teaching or the base word teach. Teach means to explain to someone how to do something. Now take a look at this picture. The teacher is discussing in the classroom. Notice that the syllable er is added at the end of the base word teach. Teach plus er is equal to teacher. The syllable er is a suffix. Suffixes are affixes found at the end part of the base word. The suffix er means a person. Teacher means a person who teaches especially in a school. Take a look at this one. The rainbow is colorful. The base word of the word colorful is color. Color means the quality of an object or substance with respect to light reflected by the object. A trivia for you kids, the rainbow has seven colors. They are represented by the acronym Roy G. Biv. It stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. Now back to our lesson. Notice that the syllable full is added at the end of the base word color. Color plus full is equal to colorful. The syllable full is another example of suffix. Full means full of or having a quantity that would fill something. Colorful means full of colors. Here are other examples of common suffixes. Suffix li means in a manner. Example, quickly. Suffix ward means show direction. Example, forward. Suffix ways means show direction. Example, sideways. Suffix er means a person, examples, driver, and teacher. Suffix full means full of or having a quantity that would fill something. Examples, careful, spoonful. Suffix ing means an action or result. Examples, painting, drawing. Suffix ism means a belief or condition. Examples, Christianism and Buddhism. Suffix ion means a process, state, or result. Examples, decoration, ambition. 
suffix less means without. Examples, homeless, careless. Now, let's test your learning on affixes. Help Elise choose the correct prefix from the choices to complete the word in the sentence. Number 1. Rose has no friends because she is blank friendly. Great job! The correct prefix is un. Rose has no friends because she is unfriendly. This time, help Elise choose the correct suffix. Number two, electricity is used blank. Incredible! The correct answer is full. Electricity is useful. Excellent! Now you know how to use affixes. Kids, here is another activity to test your learning on affixes. Get ready and show what you got! Pick the cherry that has the right word with a fix. The meaning in the cupcake will guide you in choosing the correct answer. Number one, to read again. Miss Reed, re read. Fantastic! The correct answer is re read. Number two, a person who paints. Painter, painting. Good job! The correct answer is painter. Number three, to put in the wrong place. Misplace, replace. Success! The correct answer is misplace. Number four, not clean. Unclean, reclean. Awesome! The correct answer is unclean. Number five, full of peace. Less peaceful. Two thumbs up. The correct answer is peaceful. You did a great job, kids. Now I know. Affixes change the meaning of the words when added to them. Great job, Elise. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, Gina. Thanks to you too, Teacher Laila. You're welcome, Elise. Thank you for joining me today in learning English. Again, I am Teacher Laila. Bye, Teacher! I had fun, Gina. I can now continue arranging my stuff. That's right, Elise. You must keep your belongings in order. That is one way to help your mom. You can help her do it instead of her. I will remember that. Thanks, Gina. I have to go for now, Elise. See you next time. Bye, Gina. Learn English. Welcome to Exploring English with Elise. English is fun and exciting. Words, phrases, and sentences are captivating. Vocabulary and grammar are interesting. The universal language 
is amazing. Listen, speak, read and write, know the language and use it right. Come along and join the lease. She explores the world of English. Let us discover. Let's learn English. Welcome to Exploring English with Liz. Kids, remember, always keep your belongings in order. It is easier to find something when you know how they are arranged. Also, things in order are pleasant to look at. You can even help your mom with the household chores. Instead of your mother doing it for you, you may be the one doing it for her. Thank you kids for joining me today in exploring the wonderful world of English. This is Elise. Till next time, bye!